Hello, church family. The elders have asked me to uh, take a few minutes to make a video and kind of update you in a little more detail on uh, what's going on with the, the church right now. It's kind of difficult to do that um, in our Sunday morning worship setting. And so I felt like that um, the best way to do that would be to just sit down with you and, and share with you for a few minutes, uh, kind of update you on, on where we are. I've made a few notes to myself, so I'll be sure and not forget anything that I do uh, want to share with you. Uh, first of all, you heard Chris's announcement yesterday about the fact that while Governor Stitt has said that um, churches can now begin to meet starting um, the 1st of May, that the elders talked about it and decided to put that off for a few weeks. Now, of course, the primary reason for that, as Chris explained, is simply their concern about everybody's health and, and the spread of this virus. It's wonderful that things are opening up and I think all of us uh, are, are prayerfully hopeful that um, as shops open up and people go back to work and begin to interact with one another, that um, the virus isn't going to suddenly take off and, and spread like wildfire. But the fact of the matter is we don't know. And so they felt like it would be prudent to wait a few weeks and, and see how things go before we actually initiate um, beginning to come together here again. Now, along that line, uh, you got to understand that when we do get back together, probably um, we're not talking about normal as you know it. The guidelines from the governor right now, if we were to meet next Sunday, which we're not, but if we were, um, you can only sit at people in every other pew. And while a family can sit together, there has to be six feet of space between that family unit and, and whoever else is sitting in the pew. In other words, probably in our auditorium, uh, we might have 60 max uh, percent of, of seating capacity, maybe 70, that's all. Because when you eliminate every other pew and then spread people out six feet apart in the pews, um, you're really going to cut down on how many people could sit in here, which means that we'll, if we do do this at some point in the future and these um, separations still remain in place, we're going to have to open the panels at the back, set chairs in the foyer uh, six feet apart uh, in order to observe the physical separation guidelines uh, and so on in order for us to be able to be together. So understand that when we come back together, uh, there's an excellent possibility that normal may be kind of abnormal. Uh, along with that, uh, we also discussed for the foreseeable future, we won't be passing trays uh, when we are together. Uh, we will use those individual communion cups. That's simply um, safer in, in so many ways. I'm sure that's what we'll continue to do. And they have talked about, and we probably will provide, if you would like, uh, and you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Uh, if you don't want to wear a mask or if you forgot a mask, we will try to provide mask at the entryways when you, when you come in. And so I just want you to be aware that um, when we are able to come together, there's an excellent possibility that the normal that we've always known uh, isn't going to be like it, like it used to be. But again, the elders for the next few weeks just kind of want to observe and see how things go before we take that particular step. Um, in regard to your giving, uh, thank you. You've just been tremendously faithful in that and regular in that. And um, in, in a crisis like this, I don't know if you've seen, there have been any of a number of uh, reports on churches that are really, really in desperate financial trouble because their giving has just fallen through the basement and uh, they don't know if they're gonna be able to keep the doors open or not. Uh, that's certainly not true here, and it's because of your faithfulness to God and um, your stewardship, and we're very, very appreciative of that. Again, several avenues for you to continue to, uh, to honor God with your giving. You can do that through PayPal, and a number of you are using that, and that's, that's a wonderful venue. Uh, you can mail your check in. You can bring it by the building, but um, we very much need you to continue to be faithful in this area. Um, there are all kinds of challenges that are coming our way courtesy of, uh, of this virus and not just here, but as Glenn mentioned a couple weeks ago, 
um, in places like Honduras, and, and there's a very real possibility that in the future we may need to be sending aid in that direction to help people who are in much more desperate straits than, than, than we are. Along that line, um, we really have been blessed, brothers and sisters. God has been so good to us here. Uh, when you look at the situation in places like uh, New York, um, we are so far removed from that here, um, both um, as far as the physical threat of the virus goes and also as far as the economic repercussions of, of the virus. Yes, uh, we've been affected here to some degree, but nothing like they have in other parts of the country. And uh, I'm sure you're very thankful, as I am, that God has in essence, in many ways, spared us from, from much of, of the tremendous difficulty that's being faced by so many right now. You know, it's one thing um, when doors close and another thing when doors open. And it's interesting how God works. Um, we see some doors close and we see other doors open. Um, we're not able to meet in the building right now. You know, we're having to, uh, to worship uh, via the via the internet and um, we're so thankful that that we have that venue and we're that we're that we're able to use it but I, I just uh, I just wanted to share with you um, how again while some doors close other doors open and that um, can be a pretty special thing we right now on on Sunday mornings are averaging in the neighborhood of uh, 400 views of our worship time together. Um, YouTube says that, that their formula is about three people per view, which means that roughly 1,000 to 1,200 people are worshiping together with us on Sunday morning, which means that, that um, our, our worship time together vastly exceeds the numbers that we would have if we were just meeting in here in a, in a normal way. Uh, God's really opened some doors there and we're getting letters and, and hearing from people. Uh, who really feel blessed to be able to, to share with us in that time. Um, also, we have been closed out, of course, from Eddie Warrior and Just Done, being able to go out there and conduct classes and hold worship services. We hate that and hope when soon that door will be open. But in the meantime, uh, Barrett has been taking the worship time that we spend together and editing it and putting it on a DVR. And uh, that's being, our DVD rather, and that's being taken out uh, to Eddie Warrior and to Just Done. And they're showing that all through the week. And so we're having an opportunity to share our worship and the word literally with thousands of prisoners at Eddie Warrior and Just Done in a way that we've never been able to do before. Um, another, I think, beautiful thing that's happening is Steve's classes on Wednesday night. Um, are being viewed by, um, saw one from a few weeks ago, like 130 or 40 views. You take that times three, that's about 400 people who have had an opportunity to, to, to watch that class. And so our participation on Wednesday night actually exceeds the numbers that we were having here in the building on Wednesday night. Uh, again, God is just taking um, the internet and the opportunity that's being presented in this way and I think using it in a, in a wonderful way that we never anticipated. And by the way, um, Barrett now is teaching our youth via Zoom. He's got a class for them on Sunday morning and another class for them on Wednesday night. And, and they're continuing uh, to be able to study together with him. And so lots of innovations and, 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 and new doors opening um, that wouldn't have been otherwise. By the way, when you, when you do come into the building, uh, you're going to see some changes in here. Um, a lot of painting has been going on. Both hallways, north and south now, have been painted. A number of the classrooms have been redone and look really nice. And so in this hiatus, while there's very few people in the building, um, that time is being used to, to make some updates and upgrades here uh, that have been needed for a long time. And we're, we're very appreciative of that. want to close with, uh, with this thought. Um, Steve talked in one of his... Um, communion devotionals a few weeks ago about how we are separated but not isolated. And I just want to reiterate that. That is so incredibly important. Yeah, we're separated. Uh, 
I miss seeing everybody. April, as I said Sunday morning, it's been the longest month, I think, of my life. It's just gone on forever. And a whole lot of it is simply not being able to interact with people you love, being able to be around them and, and share with them. We're, we're separated, but we're not isolated. Um, I would sure encourage you, if you haven't been, pick up the phone, call a couple of people. I'm, tr I'm trying to call a couple of people every day just to check on them, see how they're doing. Um, if you'll do the same, if everybody will do that, it's amazing the number of people that we'll be able to, to, to check on and, and just express our love for. Um, yeah, we do find ourselves um, separated now because of these circumstances associated with this pandemic, uh, but we don't have to be isolated from one another. And um, let's continue those beautiful connections that we have and look forward soon, hopefully, to a time when once again, we can be together. Um, God bless you, um, stay faithful, stay healthy. Um, let's uh, together continue to honor God. Let's strive to be a light in this dark world and the salt of this earth. Thank you.